In this video, you'll learn the tips the pros use for setting up and using a two-piece rail and style set, consisting of an end grain cutter and long grain cutter, allowing you to make beautiful cabinet doors in your own shop. The end grain cutter has the ball bearing in the center of the bit. Using a felt tip, write a number one on this bit since you'll always use it first. This cutter is used to produce the tongue on the end grain of your door parts. The long grain cutter has the ball bearing on the top of the bit. Again using a felt tip, write a number two on this bit since you'll always use it second. The long grain cutter, bit number two, produces a groove which receives the tongue made on the end grain cut and the door panel. This video will show you how to use this simple shop made coping sled for securely holding your material when making end grain cuts and preventing chip out. Set up for end grain cuts by installing cutter number one in your router table and locking a test piece in the coping sled. Bring the test piece up against the router bit. Notice that the end grain cut produces a lip on the front of the door frame and a shoulder on the back. The shoulder should be about twice as big as the lip. Adjust the height of the router bit to provide the balance between the lip on the front of the frame and the shoulder on the back. A good starting point is to make the plate you wrote the number on even with the top of your material. Use a straight edge to position the fence, making the face of the fence even with the ball bearing on the router bit. Make a test cut, but don't cut all the way through your test piece and into the sled just yet. Remove the test piece from the sled and have a look at your work. Check the lip on the front of the door frame and the shoulder on the back. If the lip on the front is too small, raise the cutter to make it bigger. If the shoulder on the back is too small, lower the cutter to make it larger. Before machining the door pieces, take the time to mark the back faces, since all the door making cuts will be done good face down. Now you can make the end grain cuts in all the door parts that require them. Cut all the way through the piece and into the sled. Since you didn't cut into the sled until the height of the bit was correct, you can use the sled as a setup gauge the next time you make doors. Set the height of bit number two using one of the previously cut pieces as a gauge, making the groove cutter on the bit even with the tongue projecting from the end grain. Use a straight edge to position the fence as you did before. With feather boards in place to provide down pressure, Make a cut in a test piece. Insert one of the end grain cuts into the long grain test cut you just made. Check to see that the two faces are even with each other. If the board with the end grain cut is too high, you'll need to raise bit number two. If the board with the long grain cut is too high, you'll need to lower it. When the height of bit number two is correct, slide the in-feed fence into the spinning cutter to produce a zero clearance fence and reduce chipping. You can now machine the long grain cut into your door frame parts. Be sure to keep the X face of your parts up on the router table. Dry assemble the door frame in order to determine the panel size. Find the panel size by simply measuring from shoulder to shoulder on the front of the frame. Don't forget to allow for seasonal expansion and contraction of solid wood panels. After making the door panel, the final step will be to dry assemble the door, making sure all the parts work together. Then you're ready for glue. Make your cabinet doors the CMT way, the easy way.